Today we're in a series called The Beginning of the End. The Beginning of the End. And, and the, the thought behind this message series is this, is that if we will begin to do A, then B will end up occurring and happening in our life. That if we begin to do this, then that will end up happening. And um, I usually like to give titles out. And so the title for this message is called The Vulcan Life. The Vulcan Life. So for all of you Trekkies out there, this is your moment, right? And um, this, will, this will make sense pretty quickly. Um, today I want to talk to us about truths and lies. Truths and lies. And I don't have to talk, and I don't even have to come up here and talk to you guys and convince you all that lies are bad, right? Most of us inherently, I would say 99.5% of us would agree, yeah, lying is not a good thing to do. It's in the Ten Commandments. I got it. I know I shouldn't lie. Um, lying's bad. Telling the truth is good, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and we know that, but many times I don't think we understand the impact that lying has in our life, and even more than that, of what telling the truth, how it impacts our life. And so I started Googling most famous liars of all time. And like some people came up that like, I was like, what? Nobody knows them. That's not going to register at all, right? Um, one of the most famous liars of all time, I found this interesting, was Benjamin Franklin. Um, they said that, you know, the whole kite with the key thing that you guys heard growing up, and some of you are like, kite with the key, um, that's for all the old people, right? That never happened. Scientists said that's not even possible. So um, your childhood was a farce. Um, I'm just letting you know that's what happened. But the top three, well, the top two, uh, liars that most of us would know, um, and I threw one in on my own. So we're going to start with number three. The number third, the third most famous liar of all time on Justin Graves' list is Lance Armstrong, right? Um, some of you know Lance Armstrong. You had the Live Strong bracelet, right? You remember that? The Live Strong bracelet? You're like, yeah. And his whole thing was, no, I'm not doping. No, I'm not taking performance-enhancing drugs. I'm not taking steroids. I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. And then it comes out. He was taking performance enhancing drugs. He's taking steroids. He was cheating. He was cheating. Um, and everybody's mad at him. The cycle ward's mad, cycling world is mad at him. And you're like, you cheater, how could you, right? And, and it did, the lie didn't help him look better. It made him look worse. Number two, second famous liar in the world is this guy right here. You know him, I know him. <laughs> now, if you're a Democrat, I'm telling you, this is not me being a Republican or like, oh, stick it to me. It, it was on Google, okay? Like, it was not me. And you heard the line, I heard that I did not have sexual relations with that woman, right? You remember it. He was under oath. And what came out that he did have sexual relations with that woman named Monica Lewinsky, right? Probably the most famous lie of our time that, that most of us remember, you're like, dude, that guy is such a liar, right? And, and, and the lie didn't make him look better. It made him look more foolish. Can I tell you, that's what lying does. Lying, given time, always makes us look more foolish than it does better. Most famous liar of all time, this is the one I put on, is this guy right here, Pinocchio. <laughs> right? And, and, and the poor guy, the poor puppet, Pinocchio, when he would lie, you know, his nose started looking like my nose. I mean, it just started growing, and like it started branching out there. And like, and I, I, actually watched, <laughs> I actually watched Pinocchio for this message. Um, I told Casey, I was like, I gotta go watch Pinocchio for this message. And she goes, are you for real right now? I'm like, dead serious. Do you know Pinocchio is pretty much all about kidnapping? Like, it's the most messed up movie in the world. Um, <laughs> Good values, Disney. Um, and so here's a part of that movie, and it's when the blue fairy, sound, you can't say that word masculine, like the blue fairy, um, when the blue fairy showed up and, and caught Pinocchio, and Pinocchio's been kidnapped, <laughs> and he's in this jail, it's so messed up by this puppet master. It's the most messed up movie. Anyways, she says this to Pinocchio, a lie keeps growing and growing until it becomes as plain as the nose on your face. And I, I, a lie keeps growing and growing 
until it becomes as plain as the nose on your face. And, and I'm going to push back on the blue fairy today, right? I don't think that's always true. Because there's some of us, we have lied and lied until we have convinced ourselves it's the truth. We have told lies and we have, we have convinced ourselves that it is a version of the truth. When if you were to really boil it down, it's not. And this is why the Bible, all throughout the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, it says, don't fool yourselves. Don't deceive yourselves, right? It, it always talks about that because we are masters at lying to ourselves. So today, before we get going really deep in this, I want to just spend a few moments talking about what lying does to us. Three big, three quick takeaways, and I mean three quick takeaways, lying, how it affects your life. The first one is this, lies don't just affect you, but always has an effect on others. Lies don't just affect you, but they always have an effect on the people you love and the relationships you hold dear. Second one is this, nothing gets better long term when you lie. Nothing gets better long term when you decide to lie. And the third one is this, lying becomes a habit instead of a one-time exception. Right? It's never a one-time thing. Lying always, <laughs> always becomes a habit. It becomes a lifestyle. It becomes something you do habitually instead of just one time. And the Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. It says, stop lying to each other. Tell the truth. For we are parts of each other. And when we lie to each other, we are hurting ourselves. And so today, I think most of us understand, okay, I don't need to lie, I got that, but I want to talk to us about the benefit of the truth. Because, because we can all agree that, yeah, lying's bad, but most of us, we don't understand the benefit that truth brings to us. And this kind of brings us to this Vulcan-type life um, that, that you and I are actually called to live, that you and I are called, biblically called, to live like a Vulcan. Weirdest thing, right? So when the most famous character on Star Trek called Spock. He's the guy with the pointy ears for all you non-Trekkies, right? Anytime he would come and greet somebody, he would put his hand like this and he would say, live long and you guys know the Star Trek better than the Bible, right? Live long and prosper. You're like, I got it, right? And, and, and the cool thing about this is that where the character playing Spock got this from, the greeting and the actual live long and prosper comes from a Hebrew blessing. And like when I started realizing this, I started researching this, I was like, this is so cool. And it's not just a Hebrew blessing that this comes from, this actually comes from the Bible. In Psalms chapter 34, verse 12, it says this, does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Are you kidding me right now? Like, Spock, right? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Right? The Bible is saying, do you want to live like a Vulcan? It's not actually saying that, but it's the same phrase. Do you want to live, do you want to have a life that is long and prosperous? Live long and prosperous. How do you and I live long and prosper? It says it. Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Lies. So here's our beginning of the end today. If you begin to speak truth, you will end up with a long and prosperous life. If you begin to speak truth, you will end up with a long and prosperous life. And here's what we need to understand about truth is that truth may seem inconvenient in the moment, but is always helpful in the long run. Right? It may seem inconvenient. Let's be honest. Sometimes telling the truth isn't convenient. And it may seem inconvenient in the moment, but it is of huge benefit in the long run. If lies tear down, then truth builds up. If, life, if, if lies tear things and relationships and people down, then truth builds up. But here's the problem, is that you don't have to teach your child we don't have to go into the two and three year old room right now and do a lesson about how do you lie and get away with it as a kid, right? 
we just grow up inherently, it's in our nature, to lie. We, we know this. I remember my niece when she was three years old, birthday party. My sister made a chocolate cake, said, Gabby, stay out of the chocolate cake. What did Gabby do? She went to the kitchen. It's above her head. She feels around. There's the warm cake, whomp, like this, and just shoves it in her face, like in her whole face, up her nose, all over her face, and she just toddles back into the living room. And my sister's like, Gabby, have you been in the cake? And she's like, no, Mama, I haven't even seen the cake. And she's like, Gabby... Are you sure you haven't seen the cake? No, mama, I haven't seen the cake. I want, I want cake, right? And she's like, Gabby, it's all over you. You don't have to tell somebody how to learn to lie. We just come to that arrival all on our own. All of us do. But here's what I would tell you and me. And it's our first thing. You and I have to learn how to speak, how to tell the truth. We have to learn how to tell the truth. And notice I didn't say you have to learn to tell the truth. Because some of us, the reality is, we're great at telling the truth, but the truth does horrible damage because we don't tell the truth in love. And you're telling the truth. You're like, oh, just ask me. I will tell you the truth, and it will be brutal. Do I look fat in this? Yes, right? Am I, is my hair thinning? Yes. You know, do I get on your nerves? Yes. You're just like, I'm just telling the truth. I don't know why my relationship's a wreck, right? You're telling the truth, but you haven't learned how to tell the truth. And some of us, the reason truth isn't benefiting us is because we're speaking the truth, but our truth is so harsh because we're not speaking it in love. And when we do anything in life without love, you and I always miss the mark. We always miss the mark. And here's what the Bible says. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 4, it says, My son, don't forget my instructions and keep my commandments carefully in mind. Solomon's saying this. Man, son, remember this, right? Remember this. Don't forget this. For they will add length to your days, years to your life, and abundant peace to you. Count, sounds kind of like live long and prosper right here, right? Don't let gracious love and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And the result is this, you will find favor and a good reputation with God and men. And this is, this is big. You want, to have, want to know how to have good relationships? Want to know how to have a good reputation and actually be a good reputation? I mean, learn to speak truth with love. Don't let truth travel without love, and don't let love travel without truth, because truth on its own is harsh, and love on its own is sloppy, right? There's this combination where it's this powerful thing, and it says this in Ephesians 4, 15. Instead, by speaking the truth with love, let us grow in every way into Christ. And this is what the Bible, and this is what Scripture is telling us, is that if we're going to learn how to tell the truth, we have to learn to tell the truth with love. We have to learn how to tell the truth. And the truth isn't always convenient. The truth isn't always easy. And in those inconvenient times and in those hard times, man, you better learn how to speak truth with love. Not just speak truth out of emotion, but learn how to tell the truth. But here's the reality. Most of us don't understand the benefit that truth brings to our lives. We don't. Nobody talks about, well, what's the benefit of truth? What, what, what does it benefit me? You know, besides me not getting grounded by my, parent, by my parents when they found out I lied, what's the benefit of me speaking the truth? Because it seems like a lot of times it's an inconvenient truth. Did you see what I just did there? Um, so um, what, what is the benefit truth brings? Here's the first thing I want you to understand is that with truth, two bags fly free. Two bags fly free with truth. When it comes to traveling and it comes to flying, 
most of the time I fly Southwest. And it's not because I don't value uh, American Airlines or anything like that, but I absolutely hate pain to check a bag. I hate it. I feel like I'm getting ripped off, right? Can we just have this moment for, for a second? Like, if I'm traveling on your airplane, I understand I shouldn't probably be able to pack or, or check in five bags, but I should at least get one, really two. But when I show up and I'm traveling an airline that I have to pay $50 for checking a freaking bag, are you kidding me in that moment? I'm like, I'm like, I'm going irate. I'm like, do you know what I could do with $50? I'm turning into my dad. I'm like, do you know what I can do with $50? Like, do you know that's a lot of money, right? And I'm just like, no, I don't want to pay to check my bag. I feel like I'm getting ripped off because there is a fee I'm having to pay that I wasn't counting on. And that's exactly what lying does. Lying rips you off and there's always a fee to pay that you weren't expecting when it comes to lying. There's always a price and a fee to pay that you aren't expecting when it comes to lying. Lying will rip you off. It says this in Proverbs 27, 6, you can trust a friend who corrects you, but kisses from an enemy are nothing but lies. Right? You can trust a friend. Here's what travels with truth. Trust and respect. All right, we go back to Proverbs 3. So you want to know how to have a good reputation? Tell the truth. You want to know how to have a good reputation with men and with God? Learn to speak the truth. Man, truth brings with it respect and trust. I have people that tell me the truth in love, and sometimes when they tell me the truth in love, I don't like them in that moment. Right? My girls... Speak the truth, not so much with love when it comes to my, what I'm going to wear. And they're like, you're wearing that, Dad? And I'm like, yes, I'm wearing this. Like, I bought some new Under Armour shorts. And they're like, please do not leave the house in those because that is hideous. And I'm like, game on, right? I'm just like, that's the dare. I'm doing it now, right? Um, they, they, they are speaking. I don't like it when they tell me I look like an old man. I don't like it when they tell me I'm not in style. I don't like it when people speak truth but I love that people love me more than my feelings and are willing to speak truth to me instead of flatter me with lies. And the simple reality to truth is this. Truth isn't easy. Truth isn't always convenient. But truth is focused on the long-term benefit over the short-term convenience. Right? Truth is focused on the long-term benefit over the short-term convenience. And if you and I are going to have healthy relationships, we've got to learn to speak the truth in love. If you're going to, if you're going to have a healthy marriage, you've got to learn to speak the truth in love. If you're going to have a healthy relationship with your kids, you've got to speak the truth in love. Teenagers, if you're going to live a long life, you've got to speak the truth to your parents, right? Like, I will, I'll take you out, right? Like, you've got to learn to speak the truth because you can't, if you don't have a relationship built on truth, you don't have a relationship, right? That relationship is dysfunctional. Relationships require truth, and healthy relationships contain truth and respect. And some of the reasons our marriages are hurting, it's not because somebody outside of your marriage is hurting your marriage. It's because you aren't telling the truth, and your spouse can't respect you, and your spouse can't trust you because you won't do the work of speaking and learning how to tell the truth. We're going to get better. If we're really going to live long and prosper, right? If we're going to have this Vulcan-type life, you and I have to learn how to speak truth because it always brings respect and it always brings trust with it. It's a lot easier to give a person the benefit of the doubt when I trust that person. The second thing is this, is that truth allows you to have peace, Truth allows you to have peace. Mark Twain said this, if you always tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said and to who. Isn't that great? If you always, not some of the time, but if you always tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said 
and to who? Have you ever been caught in a lie? Like, it's okay. It's okay. Like, no, never. You're lying right now. You just got caught. Um, like, if you've ever been caught in a lie, it's the most embarrassing moment and, like, fear, panic moment of your life. You're like, uh, I remember getting caught all the time as a teenager, right? Like, and my parents would be like, that's not where you were, right? You didn't get stopped by a cop. They would have given you a ticket. That's not why you're late to curfew, right? I was just like, uh, you know, they would, they would bust me. They, they knew. I don't know how they knew, but they knew. And, and when you and I decide to not speak the truth, there's no peace in that. Because here's what happens. You and I had to keep telling lies to cover the first lie. We had to keep up with all the lies. And we had to keep up to who we told that lie to. And now we get freaked out. And now we're, we're panicked that that person's going to find out that we didn't speak and we didn't tell the truth. And so we try to keep covering and keep covering and you're panicked and you're hoping and you're hoping that they don't find out. Can I tell you, that's no way for you and I to live. That's not living a life that is long and prosperous. That's living a life out of panic. And what I can tell you today is that trust brings, truth brings peace. Proverbs 12, 19 says this, the truth will last forever, but lies last only a moment, right? Such a great verse. And, and what I would tell you is that the fallout of your life isn't always immediate, but it is always eventual. The fallout of your life, the, the lie, the truth's gonna come out. And the fallout of your lie, why it may not be immediate, it will be eventual. And truth is a way better way for you and I to live because truth, instead of bringing us panic and chaos and this whole web of trying to remember all the lies we've said, truth is this true, said it and forget it. Like you get to say it and you don't have to worry about keeping up with truth. You don't have to dress it up, right? Truth to me is like the Stouffer lasagna of life. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of like frozen dinners, okay? But there is an exception. I don't know if you've ever had a Stouffer's lasagna, um, especially the ones from Sam's, but they are a game changer for your life. All the moms out there, this is a life hack for you. The great thing about a Stouffer's lasagna is this. It's not healthy. It's not good for you, but it is good for you, right? Like, like it's good, and you don't have to, like, you don't have to put any more marinara on it. You don't have to put any more cheese on it. You just put it in, you pull it out, and you set it and forget it. You don't have to dress it up with pepper. You don't have to dress it up with salt. You just to get to enjoy it the way it is. And lies you always have to dress up, right? Lies you always have to make better than what it seems like. And the truth is the Stouffer lasagna of life. You just get to sit it there and enjoy it. And man, why would we not decide to have a life full of peace that we're enjoying life and we're enjoying the peace that the truth brings instead of the chaos lies bring with it? And there's a better way for you and I to live this thing out. There's a better way for you and I to have this Vulcan life, right? To live long and prosper. And the Bible says this, if you want to live life, a long and prosperous life, keep your mouth from speaking evil and your tongue from telling lies. So here it is. If you and I will begin to learn how to tell the truth, we'll end up living a long and prosperous life. That's a promise. And that long and prosperous life is full of peace, is full of trust, and is full of respect. And it's all up to what you choose and what I choose. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. And God, I come before you today and I ask that in this place, that we would not just be hearers of your word today. But that today, we would be doers. God, that we would be doers. of God, that we would not hear 
your word and not apply it because, Lord, there's some of us, our marriages are in trouble. Lord, our workplace relationships are dysfunctional. Lord, our friendships are falling apart, and it's really just a result of us choosing the convenience of lies that really turns into the inconvenience of lies instead of choosing to speak the truth. And so God, I pray, don't, don't, as you said, the foolish builder, the foolish person, here's what I say, here's what I say, and, and, and never applies them to their life. But the wise person hears my teaching and puts it into practice. And so God, let us put into practice your word today. Let us put into practice what, what we know we ought to do but some of us, we simply just aren't doing. God, I pray for some of us that we would just have the courage to be courageous and to tell the truth. God, that we would stop taking what, we, what seems like the easy way out and instead we would keep the long-term benefits in mind. And that, Lord, we would learn how to speak truth so that it leads us to a place of peace, a place of trust, and a place of respect. That we may live this life out in a way that is long and prosperous and peaceful. It is in Jesus' name I pray with heads bowed, eyes closed today if you're here. Before we go any further, you say, Justin, you know what? Truth be told, where I'm at in my relationship with Jesus Christ isn't where I should be. And we're masters at deceiving other people. We're masters at convincing ourselves of something that's not truth. And for some of you, that's you today. And the only way this changes, the only way this gets better is for you to own up to what is real and not the narrative you wish was real. And today, if you're here and maybe you've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life, or maybe where you are isn't where you should be, and you know it, when I count to three, all I'm going to ask you to do is raise your hand and we're going to lead you in a prayer that will change your life. One, two, three. Three, is there anyone here today you say, Justin, that's me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anyone else? You join these hands that are lifted. You say, Justin, that's me today. And there's a change that needs to happen in my life. Is there anyone else before we go any further in service? If you raise your hand, if you please repeat this prayer after me and mean it from your heart. Jesus, I come before you today and I confess that where I'm at isn't where I should be. I confess that I've sinned and that I've messed up. But Jesus, I ask for your forgiveness. I turn away from the life that I was living. I repent of it. And I turn to you. And I grab hold of the life you have for me. I ask that your grace and love would enter my life. I confess you, Jesus Christ, to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm gonna live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.